welcome to our broadcast. I'm your host, Michael Lanch, and this is Oakland Is. Today we're going to have the opportunity to hear a poetess, Miss Lillian Gibson, who's going to share her poetry with us from all of her wonderful experiences as a human being just being here on this marvelous planet. I want to welcome you to our program. Thank you, Mr. Lane. Yes, you know, I, I know we were talking a little earlier. Uh, it seems that the experiences that we talked about would be uh, uh, just a, a fountainhead of uh, experience that you could write marvelous poetry. And uh, I noticed that your poetry feels like a paintbrush on a canvas. Can you share with us your what what is your motivation? Uh, what is your passion for poetry? I really don't have a choice, Mr. Lane. Mm -hmm. I'm driven to write poetry. I have been driven to write poetry since I was a young child. And although I have not published any po poetry books, I've written throughout my life on different subjects, different mm -hmm. experiences, and different people. Wow, yes. And yeah. that's what amazes me. And. Uh, I don't understand it myself, actually. Yeah, but you, yeah, so, so the passion comes out of your childhood? Well, not necessarily. Uh, I can't say it comes out of my childhood, but I was just driven. You know, as children, we have certain motives and we have certain tendencies. And we really have certain aspirations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I always did love to write. I had sisters who loved to do other things, but they never did write. But I was one of uh, two other sisters in the family, and uh, we, we did different things. I had an athletic sister. I had a sister who was, well, I would say not interested in dealing with people, actually, mm -hmm. but she was very studious. I see. And then, here I am, I love to play with cats. I love to go and talk with people and observe people, so that's where my poetry comes from. So yeah, a, a good poet mm -hmm. would mm -hmm. probably have to observe life. Yes, And yes. to find that rhythm, that, that, that prose and that poetry. Mm -hmm. And um, I certainly would love to, if you could share uh, a, a poem with us. Yes, uh, I would love to. Um, one of the poems I have here was published in the National Library of Poetry, and I have another poem published in another volume of the National Library of Poetry. Okay. What's the title of the, this particular poem? Uh, the name of this poem is The Jungle. Okay. And I received an award for this poem. I think you have it oh, there. Yeah, let me uh, and, just uh, hold this up. The Editor's Choice Award presented to Miss Lillian Gibson um, for Outstanding Achievement in Poetry. Uh, presented by the National Library of Poetry. Wonderful. Let's hear uh, The Jungle. Violets, wild violets, are beautiful here in the jungle, where violence is supreme and bread is the power symbol of the predator's obsession for more, more, more. Hunger is an end in itself, the ever-flowing now, quenching perpetual thirst that makes beasts of men. Hate. Here love is the malady of naive prey. Trust is the facade to entrap. The strong are the majestic good, and the weak expendable. The good die young. Here the weak die young. In the jungle, only the strong survive. Yes, wild violets are beautiful here. All flowers reminiscent of what could have been. Is there still time? What would 
satisfy the hunger, the desolating hunger, and end in itself in the jungle. Okay. Wow. You think about the, um, mm -hmm. the message that's in that. Only yes. the strong survive. Um, yes. you, it it reminds you of um, that the city can be a jungle in a right. sense. So we were mixing some marvelous uh, metaphors there. Right. Yeah. Where, where, where were you? I mean, how did you inform that particular poem? I mean, what was working on you? I use symbolism and metaphor mm -hmm. in quite a bit of my poetry. Okay. And uh, not all of it, but in, in some of it to really emphasize some of the things that are really deep in my mind. And that way I am able to really uh, express myself and make somewhat of a, some kind of, I, I guess you would say. Well, you're making a statement. Well, a statement, but some impression, mm -hmm. you know, upon people of what really is happening. And sometimes you have to use symbolism that way. Yeah, you know, we uh -huh. just, we, uh, uh -huh. uh, uh, symbolism, uh, mm -hmm. the metaphors are great teachers. Yes. And, uh, you know, just recently um, we had this big fire in San Bruno. Oh, yes, I wrote a poem about that I want to read. Too. Oh, you have a poem on this? Yes, I wrote a poem about that the other day. Okay. After watching the news. Yeah, well, please and, uh, share. Okay. Uh, with vim and vigor. Okay. Please share. Okay, the name, I, after, after watching the news broadcasts about all the people who have mm -hmm. lost their homes mm -hmm. and all the people who were burned are in hospitals and I think there were four deaths reported. Yes. Mm -hmm. There might be more, but as of this moment, they know there are four deaths. So I was really touched, and so I wrote this poem. It's called Homeland Reality. Mm. The thunderous blast rocks your home with overpowering force. You look out your door, and all around you see fire and smoke. You see all of this but you cannot believe it. Is this really happening? In split second decision, you know it is real. You decide you must move fast and get out or be blown out and engulfed by flames and smoke. No time to call 911. No time to pack clothes and food. Barely time to grab the cat or the baby or give the dog the out command. You must leave everything, your memorabilia, mm. all you have accumulated during your lifetime. This is your reality, your living nightmare, your living nightmare inferno. Your end of all your beginnings. Your day after all your glorious yesterdays. And this is not a forewarned terrorist attack, a drive-by bombing, a drug-related stakeout. This is not Afghanistan or Pakistan. This is Berlin Gain, California, USA, the land of the free, the home of the brave. And you must run for your life or die. Your sweltering car is too hot to enter, so you run with all your might down the siren field streets, a blast with burning houses and blazing trees, your feet blistering from the smoldering asphalt. Mm. And you reach safety after what seems like hours. And you rejoice, so happy to have made it, so thankful that in spite of everything, 
at last you are still alive. Wow. <laughs> you know, you think about all of the, um, the, the, the tragedy, you know, there is no preparation time. There's no opportunity to say, let's say that a tsunami was coming or yes, that yes. there was something big on its way and you've got a few hours or a few days, but here yes. you, you have, it's just that quick. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and yet you see the, the power and the beauty of life. I mean, right. that is the most precious of all yes. things. Yes, it yeah. is. Well, that's a wonderful tribute, and I don't know what we would do with a, a poem like that. Maybe we could send it to the city um, uh, where this uh, tragic event took place, or, mm -hmm. uh, but it, it, will, it marks a time. This, th this was a big event. This hit the national news. Yes, it is. It and, is. Uh, I was yeah. going to ask you, um, what is your background? I mean, you, you, I'm sure you've uh, gone to college, and can you tell us a little bit about your education well, I, and where you were originally from? Yes, I'm from Montgomery, Alabama, and I was born in Alabama and raised there. And uh, I attended Alabama State University, which is known now. At that time, it was Alabama State College. And uh, so I finished in 1953. I taught in, in Alabama for a while, and then I went to study on my MFA at the University of Iowa, okay. Iowa City, Iowa. And I stayed there for about a year, and I had to leave because my mother was ill. And so I went at home to take care of her, and while I was there, I did teach there again. Mm -hmm. And then I decided to come to California and bring her. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a famous, mm -hmm. uh, Montgomery is the famous yes. bus boycott. Right, it were, is. Were you around? Uh, uh, yes, I was there during wow. that time. Can you, yes. can you color a little bit? I mean, what was that like? I mean, nobody would get on the bus after this whole incident where right. uh, well, Rosa Parks. Well, uh -huh. well, actually, the boycott really ended segregated buses in, in the city of Montgomery. Okay. In fact, in, in Alabama, it spread, you know, but the, the Alabama, uh, Montgomery, Alabama boycott really started with Martin Luther King there yep. and uh, all of the activists. And uh, so, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. So you had a chance to, to see Martin Luther King? Yes, I, I, yes, I was there. I was a, a student. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Wow. At, at, at Alabama State College at that time. Yeah, so mm -hmm. you would have been almost, this, I guess he was a little bit older than you or a little bit... Uh, oh, yes, yeah. I, yeah. he was. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Ab uh, Abernathy was closer mm -hmm. to my age, okay. and of course, uh, he was there too. And uh, so Rosa Parks, you know, was yeah. Yeah. really the one, they say, who spearheaded the whole thing. Yes. Yeah, yes. And so... Uh, of course, she's gone down in history as yes. the mother of the Alabama boy. And, and actually of the whole civil rights movement. Right, so right. I want to thank you for coming on our program, sharing. It sounds like there may be a poem right there on that whole <laughs> movement uh, because it set the dominoes in action. But yes. I want to thank you, Miss Lillian Gibson, for coming on our program and sharing those two marvelous poems. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, that must have been something. Thank you.